Good evening and welcome to the special Vote 2014 edition of Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Tonight's show is a debate sponsored by Clean Elections. We will hear from candidates competing in the Republican primary for state superintendent of public instruction. As with all of Arizona Horizon's debates, this is not a formal exercise. It's an open exchange of ideas, an opportunity for give and take between candidates for one of the state's most important offices. As such, interjections and even interruptions are allowed provided that all sides get a fair shake and we will do our best to ensure that that happens. The state superintendent of public instruction oversees all of Arizona's public schools, including charter schools. The Republican primary features two candidates. They are in alphabetical order, former Peoria school board member and President Diane Douglas, and the current superintendent of public instruction, John Hoopenthal. Each candidate will have one minute for opening and closing statements. Earlier, we drew numbers to see who goes first, and that honor goes to John Hoopenthal. Thanks. Hello, my name is John Hoopenthal. I'm Arizona Superintendent of Public Instruction. I'm here today because a public school teacher changed my life. Not only did Jack Sagerson inspire me to graduate from college, he set the expectation that I would succeed. My team at the Department of Education's mission is to support all of the great public school teachers across Arizona. <clears throat> teachers who are changing students' lives every single day. We support these great teachers by reducing bureaucracy and returning that money to our schools and to our classrooms, and by improving their schools through accountability. With your help, we will continue to empower all of our students to learn to read by first grade, to <clears throat> learn Americans, America's exceptional history, and to succeed in college, career, and life by learning to read, write, and speak English proficiently. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And for the next opening statement, we turn to Diane Douglas. Hi, I'm Diane Douglas. I'm a candidate for superintendent of public instruction. My husband and I chose Arizona many years ago to raise and educate our daughter here. As all mothers, when she enrolled in school, I began, um, began helping at her school, PTAs, things like that, bake sales. But it, it brought a desire to me to understand education, to make sure that she got the best education possible, and to ensure that I could understand. And I began studying the American education system. What did our founding fathers intend? How did we become the education system that was the envy of the world? And how have we lost sight of that? And how have we lost track of that for your children? When she got ready to graduate high school, instead of going back to my former field as a financial analyst, I ran for the Peoria School Board and proudly served that community for eight years and two years as the board president. I'm the only Republican candidate opposed to the federal Common Core mandate. All right. Thank you both very much. Let's get it started. Superintendent Hoopenthal, you are on this program. You have apologized and repudiated online anonymous online blog statements. That being said, considering the nature of those statements, why should Republican primary voters return you to this office? Well, Ted, I know those, the, those uh, <coughs> comments are important to you. When I go out into the community and talk to people, what they're interested in is how we're moving education forward. And we have uh, amassed a phenomenal track record over the last three and a half years. We've done a tremendous reduction in bureaucracy by going through all of the, the systems in Arizona and carving out all of the paperwork in it. Let me give you an example. Fred Garnett from the Yarnell School District, he came, I had a conversation with him last week. We've been following the challenges he has with the Yarnell Fire. And he told me about a report that took him four and a half mon months in prior years with our help at the Department of Education and with our, our computerization and our assistance being customer service friendly, that went from four and a half months to four and a half hours. He is euphoric about what we've been able to do to reduce bureaucracy and return money to the classroom and free up his time to get back in the classroom. Apologies and repudiations for those statements. Good enough for you as a Republican voter? Absolutely not. I don't know how one repudiates their own statement and makes comments that it was not what was in their mind and in their heart. Clearly, if you made the statements, you must stand behind them. I would ensure people, as superintendent of public instruction, I will not allow my staff and my employees to treat uh, Arizona employees, especially school employees, school teachers, as disrespectfully has been, as has been done. We will have a Department of Education that will run rep with pride and will respect the parents of this community. The, well, please. Uh, hold on. 
The, uh, our founding fathers, we went back and we look at pseudonyms that they were using. There were over 32 pseudonyms our founding fathers used, and they were very vociferous. There is a track record for pseudonyms in the, the process. Occasionally, my language got a little bit tough, and I've apologized for that, and I've sought counsel about it, but guess what? There's a lot of avenues for getting facts into the public discourse. I have repudiated those statements that were too harsh, harshly stated, but guess what? The public discourse and freedom of speech is a part of our traditions, going all the way back to the Founding Fathers, and a whole lot of avenues were involved in getting that forward. But having said that, the real thing, the reason we're here is to run a Excuse Department me, of Education with 500 employees, and we've done a spectacular job doing that. Please. That's the real mission Before involved. that goes on, absolutely, we have a right under our Constitution for free speech, but we certainly don't have right to allow our employees to impugn the reputation of other fellow state employees or local school district employees, and certainly none of that should have been going on under taxpayer time with taxpayer resources, as clearly appears to be the case. Well, <clears throat> let's talk. Um, my opponent is confusing two separate issues. We had an outside teacher come in and was a part of a, of a program. That's what my opponent is referring to. And we were responsible for reviewing a very important test that's being developed with hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, there were some contentions in there that got difficult. And so in an internal email, one of my employees went a little bit overboard. That's a separate issue from the online blogging post. But the bottom line is here, over the last three and a half years, I've run a Department of Education where my excellent ratings by superintendents and school boards and, and teachers have gone up 22 points of excellence. That's what really, what really matters to the voters and to Republican primary voters. That's what really matters as opposed to any online blogging, anonymous well, postings. Well, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about online blogging done at the Department of Education by the top education official. And we're also talking about not just one employee he, who went too far. We're talking about the record showing that employees are blackballing teachers who don't go along with the status quo. I thought also in America we respected debate. All right, you were just referring to Common Core here? Is that what you're referring to? That's as far what as this particular teacher was opposed to. Okay, uh, talk about, we might as well get into Common Core right now. Mm -hmm. You think it's a good idea, you don't. Let's start with you. Uh, you've said Common Core is to education what the Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, is to health care. Explain. Dad, you just stole my line. I'm sorry about that, but I want you to explain it. It is top-down government control of our education system. The Constitution allows um, the federal government to do what it is delegated to in our Constitution. Education is nowhere in our Constitution, and that can't be allowed. These um, standards were snuck in virtually in the dead of night with no public debate. Nowhere in the, the Common Core debate do you hear the word parents being involved. Parents are the number one caretaker of their children and most responsible for their education. And yet we've locked moms right out of the loop. Standards stuck in, locked out moms. You know, my opponent talks about being a conservative and being opposed to the federal government. Yet as school board president, her school district applied for $32 million in Obama stimulus money with all of the strings attached and, <clears throat> and brought in $32 million worth of that money. My opponent says she wants to stop Common Core across the state. She can't even stop it in her own school district. I w uh, in May of 2010, I believe I'm the only school board member in Arizona who made a motion that our district not participate in the Race to the Top grant funding. That motion was seconded. Unfortunately, we only had two conservative Republicans on the board. Let's go back to well, the idea. No, let's let, go, no, but let's, I want let's you to respond to what she said originally, that this was snuck in with no parental involvement at all. How do you respond to that? Well, Ted, it is in place. It wasn't put in place on my watch, but it is in place. And the bottom line here is my opponent keeps saying that she's a conservative. But let me give you some examples. And well, this wait, is important to Republican primary just voters. Just one minute. The Republican just primary one voters. Minute. Hold Please. on. No, hold on. I, I'm trying to keep this on the I, idea of the I thing was snuck in without parental. I want to respond to not on his watch. Okay. Here is a letter that Mr. Hoopenthal wrote when he was in the state Senate, when he was running for this position, and he wrote it to Governor Brewer, and he says, Race to the Top's application provides an excellent opportunity, and he will absolutely support it. So whether it was snuck in before his watch or not, it was his signature that was on the application that brought the money to this state. 
The race to the top and the standards were two separate issues. Now, my opponent com or completely goes on to talk about being a conservative, yet I'm the only candidate in this race that has a reputation and a track record of fighting the federal government and defeating them. That took place on the Tucson Unified's toxic um, ethnic studies program. I took them on in state court and defeated them. I took them on in federal court and defeated them, and I'm continuing to defeat that program. The uh, illegal immigrants crossing the border and attending uh, Arizona schools at taxpayer expense, we, um, <clears throat> we put an end to that, and we, re we returned over a million dollars of taxpayer monies to Arizona taxpayers. The, the idea that uh, President Obama wants to control education through Common Core and that you support the president's invasion of Arizona children's education, those are claims. How do you respond? I categorically could re reject that. Now, the definition of Common Core, there's two definitions out there. One definition is that it's a repudiation of our founding fathers and great, America's great history. It's a one-sided debate. Um, on the climate change issue, and that it, these are low standards that don't prepare students for engineering and science degrees. I categorically reject Common Core in those terms. Please. And there is nothing about the standards that we've adopted that, that um, have any of that in it. In fact, the standards that we've adopted, um, teaching phonics through reading, knowing your multiplication facts by third grade, being able to write a sentence, a paragraph, and a research paper, these are standards that conservatives have fought for for 20 years. What's wrong those with, what's wrong with those standards? Those are the only standards that I support. The standard, the common core standards have not been tested. They were not implemented anywhere on a small scale to prove that they do anything that the apologists claim. Phonics reading instruction has been the law in That's the land of incorrect. Arizona Phonics, for over 10 years. It was passed by Representative Karen Johnson. That's what our schools should have been doing. And if they weren't doing it, then I would say the leadership allowed it to not happen. And I'd like to also let's respond go back. to let's this. Let's, let's go back. Like let's go back. To let's go back. Let's go back. We will. We will get let's right go, to it. Let's go back to 1996, where I ran a summer program all summer long, bringing in the very best research on how to teach, how to teach reading. Karen Johnson was a part of my task force. Both she and Linda Gray passed legislation making phonics the law of the land. But guess what? That consensus did not exist out in the education community. There was something called whole language. With these standards that we have in place, there's now an, a an absolute conservative victory that we are teaching reading through phonics. There's one thing to have a law. There's another thing to have a national consensus. This is a huge conservative victory. That's the standard I support. Okay, back to the idea of a federal government moving in here and telling people what to do. Well, let's talk first about um, not letting the federal, or fighting the federal government, as Mr. Hoopenthal said. Um, I believe with our English language learners, there, were, there have been multiple instances of the federal government very recently coming in and telling us what we must do. We had to go from a former, um, vetting, if you will, where three questions were asked and our previous superintendent removed it. So basically the question for English language learning was, does this child, is their primary language English? And then even now we ask three questions at the federal government's demand. And one of them is if a foreign language is spoken in the home, even if the child speaks perfect English. Very quickly. Well, if, no, if, we've got to go, we have to go to this issue. And we did not fight the federal government when they mandated from the Office of Civil Rights that we have English, speak, English language teachers who don't even have to be proficient is, in English. Is your argument the federal government has no say, period, regardless of what the federal government is saying? Saying? The federal government has no role in local education whatsoever. They're using our money to coerce us to do things. Please. Well, let's go to the, our spectacularly successful English for All Children program. It is one of the huge success stories in education across America. And we have been able, we have an onslaught of all the universities across southwestern United States attacking that program. What I was able to keep in place, I was able to defeat the federal government on this, is that we have an absolute requirement, and I'm the only candidate that supports that absolute requirement, that students learn to read, speak, and write English before they move into our regular classrooms. That requirement, along with the training that I've put in place, has resulted in a spectacular success. English language learners have gone from 157,000, we are now down to less than 80,000 uh, learners. Well, one of the highest re, re movement rates of achievement in the nation, moving these students into our regular classes. Back. There's ongoing skirmishes with the federal government. I have defeated them in those skirmishes, 
And we, we have that requirement in place in Arizona. Back to Common Core. Opponents, you called Common Core opponents at one time barbarians at the gate. What did you mean by that? Well, Ted, I was referring to Indiana. Indiana, everybody's saying that Indiana got rid of Common Core. No such thing. What Indiana did was create a mess of their education standards. And what I have gone, done is gone across Arizona to every Tea Party, every conservative group, and said, look, we have to deal with Common Core and get a conservative outcome. We need to do that intelligently, not barbarically. I've asked them to raise the, get, raise the ante, to think about this, think this through, and to make sure that when we make our revisions, that we do so in a way that doesn't damage Arizona's education system the way Indiana did. Okay, respond, please. The last I checked, Indianans don't live here in Arizona, and Mr. Hoopenthal said he would fight off the barbarians at our gate. That means Arizonans, that means Arizonans' parents and Arizonans' teachers. What Common Core does, we can't raise the standards because they're copyrighted. They're controlled by an organization outside of Arizona, so we can't add to them. And we just, we, we have to get our classroom teachers back in control of their classrooms. Where education, it's really its best, and where education really works is when it's the classroom teacher one-on-one -on -one with those children, not when they're looking at reams of paper from the Department of Education. The uh, two, just go to the issues of, of the standards. We need to deal with this situation very intelligent. We have a large number of people who are very concerned about our standards. We don't want to do what Indiana did. We don't want to do what Louisiana is doing, and we don't want to do what Florida is doing. Well, I'm going to partner Back with the next governor. Core. I'm going to partner with the next governor and very systematically do a review of these standards to ensure that we keep all of our conservative gains and we address any issues that conservatives have about these standards. I've spent hundreds of hours going through all of the objections to these standards to try and say, how do we steer this process through in a way that doesn't damage Arizona's education system and our conservative values are intact? Last word on this, on we, Common Core. We can't do that. We don't own the rights. Our Arizona standards were written in Arizona. They were written by Arizona teachers with tons of input from Arizona parents, and we could change them and strengthen them. And we had a track record of doing that over 20 years. Common Core is owned by someone else. We have to get 40 some other states to agree to any change. That's not what Arizona moms and dads want for their children. That's not what teachers want in their classrooms. Let's talk about the office, responsibilities of the office. You were involved with some robocalls promoting free tuition to private schools. Mm -hmm. Why were you involved with that? Well, I've been a passionate advocate for school choice for over 20 years. I was the deciding vote to bring charter schools to Arizona. I was named one of three people most responsible for bringing tuition tax credits to Arizona. And I believe that the Empowerment Scholarship account is gonna be one of our more important school choice initiatives. We have over 70% of those students are special needs students. Across the nation, there are hundreds of millions of dollars of lawsuits between special ed parents and their schools. Full out combat. These lawsuits destroy the principal, destroy the teacher, result in animosity. In Arizona, we have only two of these level one lawsuits going on. Pennsylvania, for example, has 65. We empower parents through a scholarship, not through a lawyer. Is it appropriate for the state public's, public schools chief to be robocalling in promotion of private schools? Well. There's some decisions you wouldn't take back. I would take back that one, but I am a full-scale advocate of letting every parent know of that opportunity, but not in that way. Um, we're we're going to use more appropriate venues, um, and uh, we would move forward um, publicizing that choice. Is that something you would get involved in? It seems like Mr. Hoopenthal always wants to unring the bell after he's done it. Um, certainly, I am an advocate for school choice. I believe that God gives uh, children to parents and they absolutely have to guide their upbringing and make all their educational choices. However, there is a difference between advocating from the public superintendent's office for a private school to get your name into 16,000 households. You have both mentioned uh, school choice and, and you both like the idea Arizona is a leader in school choice. We've been a leader in school choice for quite a while. Why aren't our results any better? Well, Ted, we, there are a number of successes that we can look at. I had a discussion with Milton Friedman, sort of the godfather of school choice in, um, in the nation uh, in the 90s, and I said we would first see the improvements 
in social indicators before he saw it in academic indicators. Very deep analysis as to what fundamentally was going on. And we are seeing that in Arizona. We have had a stunning reduction over the last decade in juvenile crime, juvenile arrests, juvenile violent crime, thefts of automobiles by juveniles, and it's been highly correlated with our, we need more scholarship on this issue. Now we believe in the next decade we'll start to see the dividend in academics. But we've seen a dividend in academics too. We have a number of schools that are in the top 50 of the nation in terms of the quality of their academics. Why aren't we seeing better academics? I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, the crime is down, but as far as academics, this has been around, school choice has been around for quite a while. Why aren't we seeing better results? We, I believe we are seeing better results in certain areas, but when we look at some of the um, crazy things that we're allowing to come out of our colleges of education, where we teach, we refuse to teach our children basic phonemic reading instruction, we teach them what I call cockamamie schemes to do mathematics instead of and just confuse them at a very early age and put in inappropriate um, inappropriate learning methods when we know what works English has not changed in eons we add some words from time to time but math has not changed in eons we're dealing with human beings what Common Core is trying to do is stuff them into a little box where parents don't want them we need to have all kinds of responses for all kinds of students teacher retention teacher attraction how do you keep them? How do you attract them? Well, we're going to have an opportunity now with the settlement of the lawsuit. There's going to be quite a bit of money coming in. It's a certainty now. Um, <clears throat> the exact amount remains to be decided, and we're going to be very active in determining that. But number one, you raise starting teacher salaries. We, I'm a strong believer in local control, but we're going to tell local school districts we need to improve starting teacher salaries as well as average teacher salaries. We need to increase supplies in the classroom. And finally, we need more career and technical education. We need to restore that career and technical education funding that was cut during the downturn. And so we are going to be passionate advocates across that spectrum, particularly for supplies in the classroom for our teachers. Uh, attracting and retaining teachers, how best to do it? Well, we don't know that it will be a guarantee that we will get extra money from this uh, court case that came out. The legislature may choose to appeal that decision. We've got, we are sitting on a fortune in state land trust funding. In a hundred years, I believe we've sold about 10% of the land in the state land trust. If we put that money to work for our children and we sold some of that land or leased the land and put that money into our schools as was intended, we would be able to compensate our teachers appropriately. Uh, and that's also a local decision. I don't want to take any more decisions. I don't want the Department of Ed to be as bad as Obama's Federal Department of Ed mandating everything. That's why we have locally elected school boards. As bad as uh, President Obama. <laughs> well, our land trust money are all dedicated. There's a steady stream of money coming out there moving into education. 100% of that money goes into education. We, we at the Department of Education, if you go around the state, if you talk to superintendents, to Fred Garnett over up at Yarnell School District, um, if you talk to any number of, of superintendents, what they will tell you is we have been doing an excellent job of improving, reducing bureaucracy, and improving our customer service. Our customer service ratings, and we get 2,000 surveys back from superintendents through teachers, have gone up by 22, over 22 points of excellence since I started. That's a huge improvement. We started the debate by mentioning uh, the anonymous blog comments, which are, have overshadowed a lot of things in this race. Can you look at achievements and accomplishments from the office and get past that particular controversy? I believe that, that um, citizens have to have respect for their elected officials. We see this problem at all levels where we think we have a ruling class rather than an, a representative republic anymore. And I don't see how you get past having so little respect for the people you represent, in and, my opinion. And again, I, I've asked you this question before. How do you get uh, low-income Latino families, school children, uh, teachers, etc. Some of the comments that were written, we've gone over all that. However, how do you get their trust regained as, as overseeing what they do? Well, Ted, just within the last two weeks, I have a huge math program that I've been heavily involved in down on the south side of Tucson, the poorest, most impoverished neighborhoods. They're completely aware of this background, and yet they know what I'm bringing to the table that I'm bringing to the table an all-out effort to rescue students in poverty. And they embraced my math program. When I walked in there, they could have treated me with a cold shoulder. They embraced me. 
They told everybody there that it was my math program that we were bringing in, talking about the spectacular results we've been getting. That's what really counts. I think a uh, lot of Republican voters were interested in hearing what uh, Superintendent Hubertal had to say about those blogs. I think a lot of Republican voters are interested in you in the sense, are you a single issue candidate? Is it Common Core, Alpha, and Omega? Common Core is not a single issue. Common Core is the issue of education. Under co it's not actually Common Core, it's the race to the top agreement we have with the federal government. It tells us what we must teach and how we must test our children, which will control curriculum. It tells us how we must evaluate and compensate our teachers. It tells us how we must grade our schools. And it has a data collection system on children that rival communist Chinese. All right, we have to stop it right there. Each candidate will now give a one-minute closing statement and going in reverse order of the opening remarks. We start with Diane Douglas. I'm Diane Douglas, and I'm asking for your vote in the Republican primary. I am the only pro-life, pro-family Republican candidate who's opposed to Common Core and wants to put control of your child's education back in your hands. You know what's best for your children, and you know that your children's education will be absolutely the best when it's your child's teacher and your child working in that classroom interacting, not being told by the federal government, not being told by bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., or even in the center of Phoenix, what's best for your child. I'm Diane Douglas, and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. And thank you very much. John Hupatal now with his closing remarks. Thank you, Ted. We've talked about improving our schools today. Now let's talk about protecting them. As superintendent, I have safeguarded our schools from Obama's liberal agenda, and I'm the only candidate who has a track record and the ability to deal with the Common Core issues. I stopped illegal immigrants from crossing Arizona's border and attending our schools at taxpayer expense, returning over a million dollars to Arizona taxpayers. I defeated TUSD's to Toxic Ethnic Studies program, which indoctrinated students to resent America, and I defeated that program in state court, in federal court, and I continue to defeat that program. And I safeguarded Arizona's hugely successful English for All Students program, Structured English Immersion, from federal overreach. In Arizona, we retain the requirement that all students learn English before they join our regular classrooms. With your vote, I will continue to defeat Obama's liberal education agenda and protect Arizona students. Thank you. All right, and thank you, candidates. Thank you for watching the special Vote 2014 Clean Elections debate featuring the Republican candidates for Superintendent of Public Instruction. Arizona Horizon's next debate will be Thursday, that's July 17th, when we hear from Democrats running for Congressional District 7. That is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.